So I think that the the crisis of democracy that we're experiencing at the moment does have some uh, roots within the education provision. I mean, it's hard to have a functioning democracy without people having access um, to high quality education. And that starts in school, it starts in primary school, um, through secondary and university and so forth. Um, I think very few people would disagree with that. I think the challenge that we have is that we have an education system um, globally, very much so in, in the Western world, which is geared towards things that we can measure, and um, particularly uh, academic subjects, quote, unquote, um, you know, math, science, English, and so forth. Um, because these are taught and, and, and tested in a way that's eminently measurable. The problem with measurement and standardization is that you end up uh, narrowing the curriculum and, and narrowing the tuition so that we can measure success um, through a quite restrictive testing regime. Um, the result of that is that, you know, you, the sort of undesired consequence is inevitably you get what is commonly known as teaching to the test. Um, the, the, the teacher who may very well be an experienced practitioner, nevertheless now is, is rewarded, monitored, um, performativity is based on um, how many of these young people they can be got through, almost like an assembly line, um, through a, a set of tests within a narrow curriculum. Um, that doesn't leave a lot of space for um, critical thinking. Critical thinking takes up time. Um, actually, you, you know, it's quite common now to have young people, whether they're doing a university degree or whether they're in high school, and they'll, you know, be thinking, well, well what's what the point of me learning this? Because will this get me through the test? I mean, I was speaking to a, a university lecturer in, um, in, in Holland, in the Netherlands, just the other day, who was saying that, you know, students in the engineering course were literally asking, why were we learning this? Is this going to get me through uh, my degree? Um, that's quite a concern if that's now sort of gone from the sort of percolated down from government all the way through the academic staff and faculty or teaching staff down to the actual students themselves. So we were very much focused on, on getting to a piece of paper, a certification. When we talk about a crisis in democracy, if the population they, they may be uh, smart in a set of narrow set of subjects which are designed for industrial objectives of that society. So education as uh, the purpose of education to, to output human capital to an economic development plan, for example. Um, but they, but, but the, the subjects and the material, the purpose of education is not specifying the sort of societal objectives. I mean, I can't help thinking that after the result that we had in terms of uh, Brexit in the UK or, or the Trump administration in the United States, that we might look at what education are people receiving, and you know what would have what would would it, would it have changed anything had they had we made it compulsory um, that all uh, secondary school, high school students would study sociology, as an example, or philosophy. Um, to have an understanding about how cultures and society are are created and how they're established and how how they're operated, and some of the history of those of those systems, because it strikes me um, now it, it may well be that you know for a lot of the people that leaving the European Union is 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 a good idea, but I think if we look at the bigger picture, you know the, the, the challenges of this century, let's not worry about the next century. Let's think about this century. The challenges, the real big challenges, such as population, um, environment, antibiotic resistance, um, ideology, diversity, these are, these are the challenges that any child going to school today are going to face in their lifetime. So if you look at what's happened with Syria, which has its roots also in climate change, um, you know, just four million souls have been looking for a new home. And this has caused immense uh, issues for governments in Europe um, and in the United States uh, about, well, they can't come here. 
well, I mean, we've been here before, of course, in, in history, and we seem to be revisiting that. Um, but also, the, you know, four million people is, is a drop in the ocean compared to what will happen uh, in, in the course of this century, where it's quite likely, as a result of the combination of, of large, large-scale population and, and climate change alone, without any of the other issues I mentioned, is it'll have 400 million people moving. Um, so the idea that to prevent this, we can, you know, we can annex ourselves, you know, we can, we can you know, close the, the, the channel tunnel and we can build walls across our borders is utterly ridiculous. So nothing in our education systems at high school or university is preparing children that are entering the school at the moment or are in school today for that future. We're still really uh, preparing young people for a, a 19th century industrial culture which just doesn't exist anymore. Um, and, you know, I wrote a book that was published called Learning Reimagined and people say, well, what did you see that was transformational? Um, you know, how are we going to, you know, what, what, how are we going to suddenly change our education systems? And the reality is education as a structure um, you know, like mass media or religion or, or whatever, I mean, they're all structures in a way, are designed to maintain the status quo. So the education structure really reflects um, the society. What we haven't had is a proper conversation about what kind of society that we want to have. Bearing in mind, you know, we know with, with certainty um, population increase and, and climate change um, and so forth. We know what those challenges are. So really, as a, as a species, we have agency. As a society, we have agency. We need to have a conversation about what our future looks like in 30 years and, and aim for that. And I think that the education is part of that.